Pick up any more strays while you are out? I suppose if the crew... Captain, as it appears we may soon be embarking for a maximum security prison planet, I believe the crew would like to speak with you to, as you humans put it, air some concerns. Those board goons kidnapped Mr. Phineas and hauled him away to Tartarus. How are we gonna get him out? And here we are, entertaining the notion of busting him out. That's insane, and likely a hell of a lot of fun. To extract the scientist, you will need to infiltrate the labyrinth. But that course of action is likely to be quite dangerous, Captain. I ain't no one better suited to it, Captain. I'm sure the outlaw Phineas will appreciate you saving his day, as it were, Captain. I think it's insane, but maybe the colony needs a healthy dose of insanity right about now. I know it's dangerous, and I won't lie and say I'm not scared out of my wits. The entire plan is a terrible idea, but... Outstanding. You can count on us, Captain. Waiting on your command, Captain. Can we talk? Dr. Wells has failed. I am pleased to inform you that we have arrived at the labyrinth. Please be advised that the punishment for trespassing is execution. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of Tartarus make departure impossible at this time. Oh, speak of the devil. Captain, I am receiving a transmission from the prison's docking authority now. You are hereby confined to your docking plan. Your ship is not permitted to leave until... How can I be of assistance? I request you do not... You killed the adjutant? We are outlaws in the truest sense of the word now. Come 
like a good tussle. into a prison. They lock me up. I'm liable to kill everyone trying to get back out. This might be the loneliest place in the whole system. Ain't happening. Can't. You can't happen. do that. Whew. We have a lot of shooting to do, Captain. System alert. Searching for unauthorized... All right, come!
bread, do you say?
I can't do that. No can do. I'm going. What? What was that? Here they come! Take them out!
love a great fight.
Take a breath now, folks. Once we're out there, I suspect we ain't gonna have time to stop shooting. After all you've done, all the work you've destroyed, all the money you've cost me, your misguided crusade has doomed Halcyon. Fantastic. The biggest thorn in our side we've ever had, and you just like to cause trouble. In any other circumstance, I'd admire your boldness. In this one, however, I have only two words for you. Fuck off. How dare you? Even thinking about killing the chairman of the Halcyon board is a felony. Thankfully, you're in a prison already. Find the nearest cell and wait until I'm done here. Then I'll drag you to the Executioner myself. Is that sarcasm? Do you know what I do to people who employ the lowest, most base form of humor? I fire them. Alas, as you are woefully unemployed, I'll have to do the next best thing and have you killed. In the next room is the finest auto-mechanical purveyor of death ever made. Try not to scratch the paint with your skull, it was fucking expensive. Sure.
You don't know how glad I am to see you. You lunatic. You broke into the board's own fortress and killed the chairman just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind, and I can't begin to thank you enough. What? Break into the most heavily guarded facility in the most hostile world in Halcyon? No. I have absolutely no idea how you did it. You're a goddamn miracle worker. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. So we've got to make do on our own. Seems to me that'll make us stronger in the end anyhow. You're quite right. We've got no choice but to make do on our own. You mean... we're all alone out here? Really alone? I'm afraid so, Miss Holcomb. Halcyon is the only home we have left. Returning to Earth is no longer an option. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hopes of brightest minds. And then we're going to fix this damn colony, one problem at a time. I could use your help. You're the only ally I've got, and not just because you've murdered every potential leader in Halcyon. I doubt I could change your mind even if I wanted to. You've already done more than I could ask of you. <sighs> when I revived you, I thought we were going to save this colony all by ourselves, but I was wrong. We can't save Halcyon on our own. We're all going to have to pull together, somehow. We are not a colony anymore. Our last connection to Earth has been severed. I don't know if we'll survive, but we're going to have to try our best.
The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Left leaderless, the people of Stellar Bay and Amber Heights were slowly but inevitably picked apart by the wildlife of Monarch. Left unchecked, the war on Monarch consumed both MSI and the Iconoclasts. And when the sulfur cloud settled, only stragglers from both factions remained. Some found their way to sublight, some to Terra too, and some lived their final years fighting for food in the wilderness. In the end, only the beasts remained. Reed Thompson and Adelaide McDevitt never lived to see the collapse of Halcyon. Without their leadership, Edgewater and the deserters devolved into factional conflict and small rivalries. Their lack of organization left them vulnerable. Within the space of a year, both groups had been killed by a band of well-organized marauders led by Zoe Chandler. Junlei Tennyson fought to protect the Groundbreakers' independence. While the board's influence faded, mechanical difficulties forced her to rely on parts that only corporations could provide. The cost was high, and time would tell if Junlei could balance the work with her aspirations for a better future. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the Lifetime Employment Program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Though Parvati eventually grew comfortable aboard the Unreliable, she never quite came out of her shell. And she often wished aloud that her dad was still alive to teach her about the finer points of starship care and maintenance. While the colony fell into chaos, she found an island of relative peace with Ada, and they formed an unusual bond. She decided to remain aboard the Unreliable permanently as its chief, and soul engineer. As hard as she tried to drink them away, Nyoka's memories eventually overcame her. Traveling with the crew served as a constant reminder of the family she'd lost, and so she eventually returned to Monarch to get back to what she found most comfortable, the deep end of a bottle and the far end of a trail. Few have seen her since, but travelers often swear they hear her and her machine gun in the night, screaming swears and spitting bullets. Before his untimely death, Captain Alex Hawthorne had plans to restore and modify, for combat purposes, a sanitation and maintenance auto-mechanical that he'd found in a state of disrepair in Emerald Vale's scrapyard. That unit remains broken down and forgotten, in the unreliable supply closet to this day. 
As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. Though he was always haunted by the failures of his past, he was determined to make things right by building toward the future. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. The revival project was hard and painful work, but in the end, despite limited resources, over half the Hope's colonists were successfully revived. Even after Wells passed away, the Hope scientists and engineers worked night and day to pull Halcyon from the brink of collapse. Their efforts continue to this day, which may be reason enough for optimism. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Life will never be the same in Halcyon. It is widely agreed that the colony has a chance of stabilizing within a generation, owing to the hard work and determination of the surviving colonists. Recovery is a distant goal, and the path is long and uncertain. But the people of Halcyon carry on, determined as ever. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos and Tartarus and left Dr. Wells to his own devices. The affairs of the colony never distracted you from living out your own dreams, to captain a ship, to sail the Aether, and to earn a reputation as the greatest spacer Halcyon ever had. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.